Welcome to a new video in my home automation series and as you can see I have a new son of device to play with so we recently reviewed the uh, B1P security camera and this is the Zigbee Mini RBS so this is a Zigbee version of the yeah the blind motor controller that uh, Sonoff released. So the camera came out on the 10th and this came out on the 8th of September. So they are, you know, definitely brand new products. And it looks like the theme nowadays uh, with Sonoff or well, based on the f uh, couple of products that I reviewed la uh, lately is uh, we are going to see probably the most popular products being released in Zigbee versions as well. So recently I reviewed the uh, Zigbee M5, which is the M5 version of, well, sorry, the Zigbee version of the M5 switch, which was available in Wi-Fi. And it's the same here. So uh, the RBS uh, or the mini RBS was available as a Wi-Fi version. And now we have the Zigbee version. Actually, I don't have the Wi-Fi version here, but it looks exactly the same. But instead of this, uh, uh, it has a different color, not this red color. So same packaging, same functionality. And um, but yeah, you now have the option to decide whether you want to use it in Zigbee or you want to use it with a Wi-Fi mode. And I have to tell you, I'm going to show it in the settings, at, well, in the video later on where I go into the evening application, that the user interface looks the same, the function is the same. So really there is no, you know, benefit or drawback to a go either Wi-Fi or Zigbee. It's really up to you what system you have, what setup you have, you have, if you don't have a Zigbee hub, you don't have to invest. You can just buy the Wi-Fi version. Or if you want to, uh, more devices to be on Zigbee instead of Wi-Fi, then well, you have this Wi-Fi, uh, sorry, the Zigbee version now. And just in case you don't know where this RBS is, so this is the basically roller bl blind controller. So it's for blinds, curtain motors and everything which needs to either, you know, open or close or well, open or close, you know, this way or as it curtains that way. It doesn't really matter. Basically, it is a device which has outputs for the two direction for the curtain motors. So these are represented by these two light uh, lights here. And then it also has inputs for switches. So um, in the previous video, I had a different style of switch, but for this one, I bought this type of uh, rocker switch where you can have like these two positions for up and down. So in this video, I'm going to use this for this particular model. So to show you how it works with this style, uh, style of switches. And uh, yeah, I mean, it does the job. You can program it, you can calibrate it, how long it takes for the blinds to go up and down or the curtains to open or close. And then based on that, it will be able to control percentage as well. So yeah, it does all the basic functions as a blind controller. And before we look at how it works in the app uh, quickly, because uh, I mean, I pretty much showed this uh, for the mini RBS a couple of months before, just want to show you the, you know, the box. Obviously, this is orange because this is, uh, you know, uses Zigbee 3.0. So in this box, it doesn't really say what's the uh, rated output for the motors. I think it is rated for typical um, curtain motors. Uh, if I don't forget, I'm going to leave it as in the stats in the beginning of the page. And in the user manual, it's as again, the usual, you know, affair, nothing really special. Uh, actually, there is two things I want to highlight is, uh, well, we still have the wiring diagram for the two different versions. So if you have two separate switches, that's how you wire them. Or if you have the type of switch that I have at the moment, which has sort of like a two position and the middle neutral position, that's how you wire them. I mean, not that the two wiring diagram is, is any different, but the other thing I wanted to show, which I will need to find where it is uh, in the documentation is again, you can do all the calibrations and all the functions from the app but also you can use it you can do it with this small button here which if you long press that's how you can put it into pairing mode but there are other uh, ways how you do this by using like you know short presses or double presses so here it says how you can get into pairing mode and then further down in the documentation it also talks about how you can set the limit switches and also you can use the button to set the external switch type, which is again, it's mentioned here, it's very small print, it has in multiple languages, but I'm going to show you all of these in the, uh, in the app as well, especially this external switch type, because it was interesting how it behaves with this particular one. But um, yeah, again, 
a nice little addition to the lineup and it just frees us up to use either Zigbee or Wi-Fi. One other small note that I wanted to mention is that I usually use the NS Panel Pro for testing, but you can see that I have the Zigbee Ultra here. For whatever reason, I didn't get the full functionality when I was using in the NS Panel Pro, although I was in the latest versions. And I don't wanna you know, make a huge fuss about this because again, this is a brand new product. Uh, so maybe the some of the firmware versions either on the NS Panel Pro or my phone is not up to the latest version. But again, um, it worked everything fine in the Ultra and I was able to get all the functions, um, namely, for example, the calibration function and the switch type was not appearing before, but I just deleted it from the NS Panel Pro, put it onto the Ultra and it was working. So I'm pretty sure if there are any issues with the firmware in any of the devices, that will be fixed in a week or two, so something like that. And before I go over to the actual testing, even though I showed you the wiring, maybe I'm going to show you on this device as well. So what you can see here is that we have Again, exactly the same cabling as the previous model. So we have on the two left connections, we have neutral and live. So this goes onto the live and the neutral connection, which comes from my, well, it's just a plug in my case for testing. Whoops, Sika. And then we have two output, line output one and line output two. So those goes to the two lights or those goes to the two you know, terminals or the wires of your blind motor. So mm -hmm. the blind motor would require a neutral as well. And they also have two inputs for up and down. So those are the two ones that need to be connected to the live out one and live out two. Yep. If we can focus, we have problems focusing on Monday. I guess this is a Monday. And then we have the switch as well. So you can see the two uh, yellow ones go to the switch and also the other, the common terminal of the switch then is connected to the live. So you connect the switches between live and the S1 and the S2. <clears throat> so yeah, wiring is, you know, fairly, I would say straightforward, straightforward for me, probably not straightforward for everyone. But again, look at the documentation and you will find the, the wiring diagrams uh, for both of the, you know, the two switch types. So as I mentioned in the beginning, for some reason, when I tried to use my NS Panel Pro, I didn't get all the features uh, from this device. I mean, I suspected that I was missing something. So I uh, got the um, Zigbee Ultra out, as you can see here. So now it is connected to Zigbee Ultra and it's working just fine. So I think maybe there is like a firmware refresh uh, required for the NS Panel Pro or, you know, something which is going to make it work, even though I got in contact with um, uh, Sonoff or IT and they said that the current version, which is, I think is 3.11, uh, should have all the functions that are re uh, needed for this uh, Zigbee motor controller or um, curtain controller. But again, at least with this, I, I will be able to show you how it's supposed to work. So let me go into the settings quickly. And as you can see, it's on my app. It's, you know, linked to the uh, Zigbee Ultra. And, you know, if you notice, this screen is remarkably similar because as I said, it is, uh, you know, works and acts the same way as the old uh, ZBR. Uh, sorry, RBS, ZBR, so the um, uh, mini RBS. And if I show you the mini RBS, so this is the Wi-Fi version. As you can see, the user interface is exactly the same. I made some settings here. That's why these buttons ha are, you know, the 100% and 33% is somewhat different. But uh, in the mini uh, Zigbee mini RBS, it is the same. So I can control the, uh, um, the, the shade using the slider. So you can see that the output turned on. If I do this the other way, then that's the other output turns on. I have buttons to open and close. I can long press any of these three buttons on the screen to uh, basically store as presets. And I have access to schedules so I can schedule the, uh, the blind to, you know, go up or down or, you know, any percentage uh, given a, you know, time of the day, or I can also do a timer where Again, like I can set it up to close in 30 minutes. So function is really simple. And even if I, oops, even if I go into the settings, then it's going to be the same. So you can see the current version. There is uh, assign and sharing, which is the common functions for everything. You also have the calibrate option here. So you can calibrate it from the screen, but there is also option to use it from the button. 
and then you can change the motor speed you can set up the external switch let me come back to this a little bit later and um, a blind time which controls the animation it doesn't really do anything as push notifications and logs again exactly the same features as with the wi-fi version of rbs so you're not losing anything out if you choose to go for zigbee or wi-fi it's all going to be the same uh, so the only other thing I wanted to highlight is this button because in the last review I had a switch which was uh, you know more like a um, a lamp switch so you had one that you turned on and um, and uh, it was like a PDST switch so I you know changed the switch and it remained in that position but I got a different type of switch now which is like a, you pro uh, it's like a momentary switch you push it up and then uh, um, and then it returns to the like the neutral position when you let it go so like that so and it's very interesting because I can configure it in two different ways so at the moment the way it is configured if I go back to the settings let me just go back to settings external switch so it is set to the edge mode now so now if I switch it then you know the blind goes up and as soon as I let it go then it just stops and of course it does the same on the other way as well so you know maybe this is one way you can control it if you want to um, let the blind go up and down as long as you push the button that's how you do it but if I switch it to the pause mode and if I save this so it is back into the pause mode now the behavior is different because then if I press it then I just need to press it once and the blind goes up if I want to stop it at any point i can you know push the button to the other direction and it stops and if i do it again now it goes up or down i don't remember which one is which the only thing i notice here is that i would expect accept these outputs to t automatically turn off once um the you know the blind has run to the full extent i mean it is all based on uh, calibration but what i noticed that it the output is keeps uh, it's uh, kept energized which normally shouldn't be an issue because the the blind motors uh, have a limit switch so they turn themselves off uh, automatically but i think normally we don't keep these outputs on so um, i'm not sure why it is working like that but maybe this is something that they can fix with a firmware version but the only thing i wanted to highlight here is that uh, you know using this external switch mode if you have this type of switch you can really control whether you want just you know push it once and the uh, let the blinds run up and down if you don't press anything or you want to keep you know want you you know keep pushing the button as uh, um, until you want the you know the blind to go again up and down so one thing is easier just push and then it goes up uh, on the other case you just have to you know just keep pushing so it's really up to you how you want to configure this you can you can stop the output if you press the button again but again i would expect this to uh to to the output to be killed automatically but um, it doesn't happen so yeah i mean both of them works it's uh really interesting how you can use the external switch to change this behavior which uh i find it you know it's cool it's useful and the other thing is i want to go into automations or the scenes again i would expect no differences here so i can i think what we would mostly do is well let's look at the triggers and the actions at the same time uh, well uh, both of them so mini rbs so i can set a trigger if i open the blinds or if i close the blinds or the blinds is above or below a certain percentage so again maybe you can use this to turn some lights on so if you open the blinds uh, even if you just open the blinds like above 20 percent you immediately want to turn off the lights in the same room so you can use that and you know that's a valid feature but i think what we are going to be using it most is um, when you want to do the actions so when you use the actions to control the blinds what to do based on some other scenarios so i set it to tap to perform and on the actions smart device 
and yeah so we can open it and we can close it we can pause it or we can uh, move it to a certain percentage so again thinking about scenarios like if you have a home security system let's say you arm the security then you want all the blinds to go down so you can do this so the input or the trigger is going to be a status change from the home security system and in the actions you set the 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 blinds to close and it would just immediately go down and you know close the blinds so very simple automations but uh, I think that would be again quite useful and you can do all these actions so yeah it's nice and I think this pretty much concludes my review of the Zigbee Mini RBS if you are interested in this device or this product there is going to be affiliated links down in the video description below but that's all going to be for today thanks for watching and hopefully see you in the next one